What's up, DLive fans? Coming at you. It's your boy. Find me at twitch.com slash youtube.tv. The real reason we're all here. I've been hyping this up all day. What is the topic for today? And I'm glad you asked me that. So we had a topic today. Um, I was reading on Twitter. CJ CJ, who's a well-known member of the community, really good guy, uh, well-known for his uh, co-casting of uh, RLCS League Play. Um, you know, very entertaining guy, very, very funny guy. CJ CJ made a tweet that reads, and I'll read it off here, I'll put it on the screen. For the past few season, seasons, Oceania, OS, I'll just call it OS for now, OS has received less prize money than the RLRS. NA slash EU RLCS received more than four times the amount, and last place in those regions received more than the OS champions. If you want to take our region seriously, we need more reward for effort. Help us at RLA Sports. And then later, Stumpy Goblin retweeted this and added his own comment saying, who's another, he co he and Doomsie um, co-hosted the B stream of DreamHack Valencia, the most recent DreamHack. Another, another pillar of the community, really good guy. Uh, and he retweets this and says, we've seen the support the OS region gets at LAN, but the region as a whole is not gonna grow if it's financially irresponsible for players to compete full time. OS is a wholly underfunded region across all esports. Let's be the trendsetters. A lot of, you know, very positive, you know, it's a positive uh, appeal to emotion. The, the idea being, you know, if you put money into us, we won't let you down. You know, we, we need more, we need more money. We need more of everything. So I want, I want to chime in on this because, you know, I think it's an important discussion to have. Um, and I want to be like a little bit of a sober second thought, you know, CJ, CJ known as the emotional heart of his team. And, you know, he's a very animated guy. You can see it when he, uh, when he coax, co streams RLCS, very funny, very entertaining. Um, but the problem is, is that he's appealing to emotion here in a place where money talks. If you want to look at something like the original RLCS, there was not a lot of money in that. There's still not a lot of money in RLCS, but if you want to look at the original RLCS that was just NA and EU, there was not a lot of money in it, but people still competed. They had lifestyles or they were lucky enough to be in a position where they could compete. Let's take a, a grassroots esport like Smash Brothers Melee, for example. So, at EVO 2018, remember, this is Melee. Everybody knows Melee. It's a great thing. It's been around forever. It's been around for, you know, billions of years. It's been around since 2001. I have viewers who are younger than that. Um, and the important thing to remember about that is a group of people who now are, you know, approaching between 25 and 30, so late 20s, so in a position where you would need more money because you're, you know, you're starting a family or whatever. Fourth place of that tournament got $500, and that's EVO. For those who don't know, EVO is the biggest fighting game community tournament in the world, ever. Like, it's the biggest one. Um, and the prize pool was $13,000 for Melee in 2018. First place took home eight grand, Leffen, who is so who is sponsored by Team Solo Mid. Now, here's the thing, everybody's gonna be like, well, yeah, I mean, he's the support of an org, blah, blah, blah. Most of the guys, Armada, Plup, Leffen, and Hungrybox, all four of those guys, actually, they didn't get these sponsors until you know, a few years ago. They competed for five plus years without any money and they made it work because they cared about the game. I'm not saying, you know, like, should O's have to suffer the same fate? Have they not proven themselves enough? That's that's not what the argument is about. The point is you have to look at it from a business standpoint, from a business perspective. The play has to come first. And if we want to take it back to a more like localized, like a million dollars is not that much. So Stumpy's point here about the region as a whole is not going to grow if it's financially irresponsible for players to compete full time. Unless you win or unless you're involved in all the tournaments and you're coming top four in every single tournament, which we can see from DreamHack is really hard to do for a lot of people. You're, it's, it's financially irresponsible to compete in Rocket League a lot of the time. Let's take a look at RLCS Season 7 World Championship Prize Pool. We all know that the season prize pool was a million dollars. So the prize pool was 529 grand US, which is a lot, don't get me wrong. Um, first place got 200K. Let's break that down into three teams, 60, 65K each. So say 66, it'd be 66 and a third, two thirds. So 66K each US. Assuming they don't even have to pay dues to the org that they're with. You tax that and it comes down to about 40 grand. That's a lot, that's a lot of money for sure. But that, that was if you win. You know, if you come ninth place, you get $10,000. That's not a lot of money. That's not a lot of money at all. Three grand per person before tax is not a lot of money. There's just not a lot of money in Rocket League to begin with. And then to, to be a little bit colder, Australia is not as big of a market. And I feel like, you know, I have a little bit of say in that because I'm Canadian and Canada is a small market. The only reason we are well represented in Rocket League is because we are in the North America banner. 
um, being like, you need to better fund our scene because like we'd be a lot better if you better funded our scene is like me saying Canada needs an NFL team. There's not enough market. There's not enough market. There's not enough viewers. You can't make blanket statements like, oh, you know, we pull a lot of viewers because most of the normal Rocket League viewers are just there for the drops and we don't have drops. There's probably some truth to that, but you can't make that an argument. You don't know the numbers. You don't know how many people are there for drops. Have I put on the stream to drop farm? Yes. Have I put on the stream and watched all nine hours because I wanted to watch the game? Yes. You can't say, oh, it's the same amount, like 90,000 to, or, you know, 60,000 to 20,000, the same amount. If you take away the 40,000 crate farming, that's like up there with being like, oh yeah, if you don't count all the people I don't like, I won the popular vote. Extremely topical political reference. OS is not a big market. And that's always going to be a problem for anybody who competes there. Um, and if we want to look at a broader, more empirical thing, you know, um, CJ, CJ brought up some points saying stuff like we had a team place fourth at Worlds in season six. That's true. Um, however, the captain and arguably best player in your region left for North America for money, more than likely, for better opportunities. He left to get more into the higher competitive scene and his team that he joined went from solid fourth place in North America to relegated. I'm not saying it was his fault, but I'm just saying there's not a, not a great track record for how, you know, OS measures up to the rest of the Rocket League community. If you take a look at their performance in the last Worlds, they didn't take a set. They won some games for sure, and that's great. They won some surprising games. I think Ground Zero, they took energy to game five, which is crazy. But then you can, you know, if I wanted to counter argue that, I could be like, energy doesn't usually perform well at LAN. So is that really an accomplishment? And of course, yes, it is. But if I wanted to be, you know, for the sake of argument, if I wanted to appeal to emotion, I could say it's not even a big deal because NRG is never good at LAN, Omega lol. So, I mean, wow, you know, you beat the first place team you or you took the first place team in the region to game five. But whenever they get to LAN, they're like an eighth place team. If I wanted to appeal to emotion, I could do that too. The way that, and again, this is just sort of my view of this. So don't take this as, as me saying this is how it is. But the way I see it and the way that you can observe patterns in all of business is there has to be a, a product to invest in before you get the money, usually. Obviously, venture capital, blah, blah, blah. But I can't be like, oh, you know, I average five to 10 viewers a stream. I wish Cloud9 would pick me up. If I had their m money and resources, you know, I could probably be getting a thousand, two thousand. You can't say stuff like that. That's not how it works. You have to be showing that you're self sufficient and you pull your own weight. You know, you have to be showing that you're good enough to measure up to the other competition. Could I? Could I make RLCS if if I had an org behind me paying all my expenses so that I could really f sit down and grind full time? I don't know, but it's pretty stupid to speculate like that. That's that's sort of my point to all this is if you if you're going to be OS, you have to put instead of putting your money where your mouth is, because obviously that's the, that's the issue. You have to put your skill where the money would be. You can't just say, oh, you know, we had one good placement from a team at Worlds uh, two years ago and expect people to be like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll just give you like thousands of extra dollars for that as a, as a, as a scene. Um, that's part of the meritocracy. Is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it is it kind of lame? Yes. But you can invest in a small market region, expect to have the same return on investment and expect to have the same risk of investment. You know, you already, you guys already have, you know, Chiefs had their, their sponsorship, Ground Zeroes had their sponsorship, Tainted Minds had their sponsorships and they didn't perform at Worlds. Chiefs did that one time, they came forth, that's great. But if we, again, if we look at fourth place, I don't remember what fourth place was in the prize pool, but it probably would have been like just barely enough to cover the trip to and there and the lodging, you know? So there's not a lot of money in Rocket League. So demanding more demanding more pie out of a pie that's already not big enough to support the entire scene, in my opinion, is, is illogical. Um, I can understand where it's coming from. I know it feels like a disadvantage. You're asking somebody to throw money at something that's incredibly uncertain and, you know, beyond reasonable doubt hasn't performed on the world stage with the competitors that are put with them but you get your two teams there your two best teams the two teams that are the best in your region ostensibly and they come out and they don't perform so why would somebody invest money in that not that's just not a way you run a business the only reason people are investing money in rlrs and rlcs and north american and european rocket league is because it's the best in the world you know you're flying all these people out from all over the world and you're housing them more than likely it's just, it's a giant expense. You know, we've we've had the game a similar amount of time. Um, a lot of the players who are up and coming into RLCS today haven't had sponsors. I mean, you can definitely make the argument like, yeah, I mean, Cloud9 has been with the Muffin Men forever, but the Muffin won Men won DreamHack Atlanta, which is a large multinational event. Muffin Men won that event before they got signed by Cloud9, you know? 
NRG had a long track record of dominating North America before they were picked up by NRG. These teams had long stretches of dominance. So when there was when the esports scene was fresh and these orgs were like, oh, I want to get on this. Rocket League's an interesting property. It seems minimal risk right now. Like nobody's really involved in the scene um, org wise. So how do I get my best return on investment? You pick the best teams. You pick the best teams because you expect them to get the best results and continue their dominance. Do you begrudge Drip A for getting good enough to attract the attention of a major market? I hope that Rocket League gets more funding so that we can better fund things like OS um, and, and South America because it it's really exciting to see all these new teams and new faces and stuff. But the pie's not big, man. The pie's not a big, it's not big enough for everybody. You can't argue for a, for a bigger slice of the pie when there's not enough to go around to begin with. I know that probably doesn't help anybody, but this is just sort of my opinion on it and why I think this is the case. Feel free to correct me. Feel free to any facts I might have misquoted for sure. Feel free to comment and talk about it and, you know, explain while I'm wrong. It's only fair. You sat through the video, so you get your turn for sure. Um, keep it constructive, obviously. But yeah, I definitely want to hear counter arguments to this because, you know, I think it's a topic that's w worth debating, especially if our scene is to continue to expand and grow. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Peace.